Welcome to the Garage Woodworks Video Podcast. Okay, so I'm about to start on my first big project for the year, which is a cherry bookshelf. And the first thing I'm going to do is start on the corner post for the bookshelf. And to do, and to do that, I'm going to use some nice 12 quarter cherry. Before I cut my 12 quarter cherry slab to rough length, I'm going to go ahead and cut off about an inch or so off of the end. That way, if there's any cracks or splits from the kiln uh, process, I can go ahead and remove that now. The corner posts for the cherry bookshelf measure one to three quarter inches wide square. And this piece of 12 quarter cherry measures eight and three quarter inches wide. So what I plan on doing is making one, one edge nice and flat on the uh, joiner. And then I'm gonna use a marking gauge and mark this out into four equal parts and cut these out on the bandsaw. What that will do is that'll give me uh, posts that are wider than the one and three quarter inches that's required for the bookshelf. Ideally, you'd like to have your corner posts a little bit thicker and a little bit wider than what you actually need. That way it'll give you plenty of material to play with as you square up your corner posts. Okay, so over at the joiner, I just want to get a nice flat surface. I'm not trying to square off anything at this point. All I want to do is get a nice flat surface to reference my marking gauge off of. Okay, so after about two or three awkward passes at the joiner with this very heavy piece of stock, I have a very nice flat surface on one edge of this uh, piece of lumber. Now I have something to reference my uh, marking gauge off of, and I'll go ahead and mark out uh, this piece of lumber into four equal sections. Because it can be sometimes difficult to see the marking gauge line of the bandsaw, I like to go ahead and take a pencil and place it in the groove created by the marking gauge and run it down the entire length. In order to safely cut a piece this size of the bandsaw, you're going to want to use an outfeed roller. Um, and one of the things you want to make sure uh, before you cut the piece is that when you fully extend the piece past the blade, that it does not uh, tip over on its own weight. Okay, so I got my fence set to the right width and I'm ready to make my first cut. What I'm going to do is I'm going to watch my guideline here and make sure that my bandsaw doesn't drift off of it. If it starts to drift off of it too far, I'm going to need to stop. Okay, so the first bass wasn't too bad. Uh, it's a little difficult to maneuver this large piece through the bandsaw. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and pass this uh, edge over the joiner, get a nice fresh edge, and then I'll go ahead and rip off a, uh, another uh, post. Okay, so at the joiner I made another nice flat edge, and I went ahead and used my marking gauge and a pencil and made another line. And I'll use this again as a guide as I uh, cut out another post. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is to cut these boards to rough dimension in this direction. And because I started with 12 quarter cherry, I have a lot of material to play with. So what I need to do is to examine these boards and look for any defects. And the side that has the most defects is the side that I want to cut away. This side of the lumber actually has the least amount of defects. On this side of the board, there's a little bit of sapwood. So this is the side that I'm going to trim away. So what I need to do is to edge joint this side, square it to this surface, and rip off the uh, waste on the right hand side. Before I do any squaring operation on my expensive lumber, I always like to take the time to make sure that my joiner fence is exactly 90 degrees. And to check that, I like to use my DIY alignment jig, which I simply push against the fence of the joiner and read the dial indicator. And mine is showing that it's off by about two thousandths of an inch. This joiner fence will need just a little bit of adjustment. 
Okay, so in order to edge joint this face of the lumber, all I need to do is place the face of the lumber that we edge jointed earlier up against the fence of the joiner. Okay, so now that I have two faces edge jointed square, I need to go ahead and cut this lumber down to rough dimension this way. Uh, so what you want to do when you're cutting the lumber is have your, your, uh, one of your faces that you've jointed on the surface of the table saw and the other edge that's been face jointed up against the fence. So at this point I have all four posts cut to rough thickness and width and I'll let these sit for about a week or so and let them acclimate to the shop a little bit more. Uh, and then I'll come back and re-square up one of the corners and bring them down to final dimension. So in the meantime, I can go ahead and start working on some of the other components to the bookshelf.